walking up and down. You're making me seasick. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't notice. Drink some tea. Uh, I'm not sure that I can have any, honestly. Then be done with it and have a vodka. <laughs> you think I'm that bad? I don't drink every single day, you know. Oh, I see. I didn't realize. Uh, <laughs> Nana. Hmm? How long have we known each other? How long? Too long. <laughs> I'm joking. Well, a long time. Sonia's mother was still alive, so... Yes, that's right. So what? 16, 17 years? Well, yes, that must be. And, and in that time, have I changed much at all? Oh, God, yes. You used to be gorgeous. Huh. Young and dashing. We were all mad about you. And now, well, you're older. Yes. Still handsome, though. No denying that. We all like that, but, well... What? Well, you drink now. Yes. So? No, you're right. I'm a completely different person. You're not a complete You do know why I drink, though, don't you? It's because I'm worn out. I mean, the second I wake up, it's bang, 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 up and out to someone's deathbed, sometimes even 20 miles away. And in the rare nights when no one does knock, well, you lie awake anyway. And dread of the knock, that never comes. So of course you grow old and wither in age. I mean, that's what happens. Well, if you can hold your drink, then what of it? Well, you start to go a bit crazy. Because, well, you have to. I mean, look at this beard, Nana. Have you seen it? I like it. No, you don't. No, I do. <laughs> I don't. Everybody just gets a bit... I just never really look forward to anything. That's what it is for myself. Except for you, Nana. I'll always love you. <laughs> When I was young, I had a lovely old Nona just like you. Ooh, she used to give me these warm hugs. I used to feel so safe. I used to feel like nothing could ever harm me. You remind me of someone, too. Oh? Please, have a drink. Uh, During Clint, earlier this year, I went up to Mali Square. Type this epidemic. They thrown on the sick ones in huts. Side by side, pigs running in and out. It's filthy, depressing. I never stopped all day. Just the time I got home, I could hardly even stand. Bang, bang, bang at the door. Carrying this boy. Try a new signalman. Stack card sliced off half of his foot. I got him up to the table quickly and put him under the chloroform. And then he just... just died. Right there. And, and just when you could really do without it, all my feelings came rushing back in. I, I felt like, like I had killed him. I mean, they were all looking at me, asking me if he was okay, and I just, uh, I just covered my, uh, I just sat on the uh, table, and all I could think about was why. Why can't it be a hundred or, or two hundred years from now? I mean, we'll all be gone. None of it will matter. The people then will even remember us, have anything good to say about us. No. I'll just forget all about us. The people may not remember, but God will. Yes, son. Well said. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh. Oh. Yeah. What are we talking about? Typhus. Lovely. Good sleep? Too good. Infinite black hole in the middle of the day. I tell you what's happened. Ever since the professor and his young bride returned, they've knocked me right off my bean pole. I take these stupid cat naps in the middle of the day. I wander around awake at night, 
I miss all the regular meal times, which means I stuff my face with too many snacks. I drink too much wine, which leads into the liqueurs, which inevitably leads into the spirits, which always knock me sideways. Suddenly, I wake up, and the whole damn nightmare starts all over again. It's no good. I need to be occupied. I need to be worn out. It's all because of my... Your nervous energy. Yes, my energy. It's not nervous. It's, it's edgy. It's a little bit edgy. It all started when the professor came and... So, she's younger than I am and she sees better than I do and she gets all the work done before I can even wake up. I've been... You're cast adrift. I've been cast adrift, haven't I, Anna? The professor never even stirs until noon. Before he came, we always ate our lunch at the normal hour of 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Same as everyone else all over the world, haven't we, Vanya? Yes, Nana. You know what time the professor eats his lunch? I don't know. Go on, guess. I don't know. Six o'clock. Six o'clock in the evening. Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Good lord. Then up he sits the whole night, reading, writing, working, insists on keeping that poor young girl that he's married up with him, attending his needs. Suddenly then, at three in the morning, he's ringing the bell. Bell? What bell? He brought a bell! We're all supposed to come running. Everybody is up! up. T, T for the professor, he says at three in the morning. I promise you no one gets a moment's rest. How long are they staying? Staying? They're not staying. They're moving here. To live. The university's retired him off. They've already taken his apartment back. He can't afford to live in the city. I mean, look at this. You know how long I've kept this hot water on the go now for? Two hours. T, T for the professor. He says two hours ago. Then suddenly up he announces, I'm going for a walk. A quick walk. A quick walk. A quick inspection. A quick inspection? And we're all supposed to just sit around so and wait I for I ended up paying twice for what I paid for before. I sold it for half of what I got in the first place. <laughs> That's very good. Give you a pain up your backside. Shh. Who hear you. Don't give them the satisfaction. I can have it. We can go tomorrow. Uh, Professor, your tea is ready. Uh, my dear friends, this I do apologize, but this excursion has brought forth some startling new ideas. I better grasp them while the blood is hot. Be so kind as to have my tea brought to my study. Thank you. And wait till you see the new forest. Whoa, anything else? I beg your pardon? What? What are you asking me? Just anything else, any other refreshments, a, a fresh bowl of fruit, a new pair of slippers, something from the village. Nana here, she has nothing better to do. She can walk into town. I said just tea. Yes, Professor. Thank you, Professor. Uncle Vanya. You have some kind of sauce all over your trousers. <laughs> uh, Papa, Dr. Ashraf's here. <laughs> He's been advising us. I don't know what we've done without him. I have some startling new ideas. <laughs> it's hot enough to fry an egg outside, and the great genius goes about in his overcoat and gloves. So much for the intelligentsia, eh? Hmm? I said so much for the intelligentsia. Well, maybe you know something we don't. Yeah, like what? Madam Professor. Uncle Vanya. The others have all... That's her! That's his wife! Yes, I know. <laughs> Have you ever seen a more gorgeous creature? Well... Well, what? Oh, I haven't had much time to really look. How much time do you need? Hey, Vanya, don't mind the professor's young wife. Look at Marina Timofeevna here. Oh, you should have seen this one in her day, my lad. Oh, don't grow up. Hey, <laughs> I'm riding across the fields, or walking into the shady garden, or even just looking at the way that you lay out a table, Nana, I feel an inexplicable bliss. And suddenly, one is reminded that winter is far, far away, and shush, listen, shush, Vanya. What? I'm not saying anything. You hear the birds? No. That's what I mean. It's such a particular silence. 
Oh, it's so restful here. Oh, what else could anyone possibly need? And all of that comes down to you, Nana Timofeevna. Eat your biscuit. Her eyes. Tell me you saw her eyes. Whose eyes? Young Mrs. Professor, Yelena. I didn't really look, honestly. You're no use. Lavanya? What? Any news? Is, is that some kind of a joke, Waffles? What news could there possibly be? Everything's the same as it ever was, except worse. It's not true. It is. You know. I sit around getting fatter, and the fatter I get, the more annoyed I get with everyone. And my mother, she's exactly the same. Where is she anyway? Up in the professor's study. This is what I'm saying. She remains completely enthralled to him, translating his papers, researching his billions of footnotes, still wanging on about women's rights as if it's this abstract alien concept rather than something that might improve her own wasted life. Nana, have you offered the doctor a drink? Yes. I'm working. Working where? The professor summoned me. Oh, well, of course. He's an incorrigible hypochondriac. We all tiptoe around his ailments while he composes his latest treaties. <clears throat> With straining brain and wrinkled brow, he worked into the night. Yet, the only thing the twit produced was when he took a shite. <laughs> he spent 30 years writing papers no one understands for journals that no one ever reads. 30 years in utter obscurity all the while hogging his post as professor from someone who actually has talent. So not only has he offered nothing to the world, he's actually deprived it. You sound jealous to me, Vanya. I am jealous. Can someone explain to me his effect on women? His first wife, my poor late sister, so sweet, so intelligent. She could have had her pick from anybody in the world, but no. It had to be him. And his second wife, a full 40 years younger than him, so stunning, beautiful, clever, you know? And she's wasting it all away on this old knobbly croaker. For what? I mean, why? She must be in love. You are joking. Is she faithful to him? Inexplicably, yes. Is she faithful to him? Well, it makes no sense. Where's the morality in wasting your youth and your vitality, pissing it away on some conceited old duffer? Don't tell me that's moral, it's immoral. Fanya, please. You're casual matter disparaging people? The way I see it, anyone who deceives their wife or their husband is an unreliable person that could just as easily betray their country one day. Oh, spare me waffles, will you? For God's sake, I don't mean to upset you, Vanya, but Look at me. On the very day after my wedding, my wife left me. Oh, here we go. The day after we were married, yes. After just one single night of almost conjugal bliss. <laughs> she left me as soon as the sun peeped up to be with her old, much older boyfriend. She said it had to do purely with my physical appearance, so uh, there was nothing to do about it. However, I remained faithful to her to this very day, yes. For over 50 years, I have taken care of her and all her illegitimate children, as it is in my duty. You can still see her down in the village. She's a haggard old woman now. Her lover's long dead, her beauty's entirely vanished, and what does she have to show for it all? Nothing. And me? I mean, look at me, Vanya. I, mean, I still have my pride. <laughs> and you cannot deny it. Good God. <laughs> Nana! Nana! There are some peasants on the lawn outside. Will you see what they want? I'll do the tea. Yes, my love. Tea? Doctor? Oh, no, thank you. Uncle Vanya? Hmm? Tea? Yeah. Hello. Hello. You may or may not be aware, but I've come to see your husband. Oh, Doctor, yes. He wrote to me last night saying that he was very ill. Yes, I... Yet now it appears he's been walking all over the estate. Well, you see, yesterday he was terrible. The pains in his legs were excruciating. He literally couldn't get up, and now suddenly he's... He does know that I live 20 miles away from here. What can I And say? it's not the first time. You're here now, Doctor. Stay. I don't suppose you've eaten anything? Well, as a matter of fact, I haven't, actually. Then it's settled. You'll have dinner with us. We don't dine until after 6, so I'm afraid you have to stay the night. But we'll make it perfect for you. 
This tea is cold. Oh, that's fine. It's much too hot for tea today, anyway. Well, it's quite clear. There's a significant decline in the temperature in the water. Oh, you think that's what's happened? Thanks, Waffles. <laughs> Never mind, Ivan Ivanich. We'll drink it cold. No, oh, madam. Excuse me, madam. Can I just get something straight with you? It's Ilya Ilich. Ilya Ilich Taliegin. Or as Vanya likes to call me on my periodic bout of acne, Waffles. Because I don't mind answering to this or that. Or to any of those other names, but please call me by something that recognizes my name! Thank you! You might have noticed my name on the numerous occasions that we've been repeatedly introduced. <laughs> I actually live here, with you, in this house. Perhaps you notice me dining with you every day? Every day? Three times a day? Ilya Ilich, all right? My name is Ilya Ilich. Thank you. I'm sorry, I, I just find it better to clear the air about these things. Oh. No, nicely handled waffles. You tell her. My godfather, Ilya Ilich, is our rock, our support, and our right-hand man. Isn't that right? Well, I, yes. Let me get you something nice. Oh, tea, Grandma Ma? It's cold, I'm afraid. I'm fine. Thank you, my dear. Dr. Astrop, no one told me you were here. How are you? You're very well, Maria Vasilyevna. How are you? Well, thank you. Ironically, we are busier than ever since the professor retired. Ah, uh, yes. Bonnie told me. Now that he's no longer teaching, he has so much more time to write, so we're never finished translating, reading proofs. We hardly stop for a moment. Oh, what's the matter, Grandmama? Oh, Elena, or Sonia, although I don't want to disturb him now that he's writing, but I meant to tell Alexandre, the professor, that I received Pavel Alexeyevich's new pamphlet in the post from Kharkov. My memory is really going. Oh, what? Dear God in heaven, somebody do something! Alert the professor! There's a pamphlet in the kitchen! Yes, yes, sarcasm, John, very clever. The professor's been waiting specifically for this pamphlet? I'm sure it's very interesting. What's very interesting is that Mr. Alexeyevich has more or less refuted all the positions he has held for the last 20 years, which of course has grave implications for the professor's most recent essays, which have only just been published and may well be quickly out of date. Oh, who cares, Mama, really? What do you mean, who cares? Just be quiet, relax, and drink your tea. Don't tell me to be quiet. I'll talk if I want to. There's been enough talk. And talk, and talk. You've been talking and reading bloody pamphlets for the past 50 years, and what good has it done anyone? What good has it done? So just give it a rest. That's all I'm saying. Oh, that's all you're saying? You were asleep on the floor over there half an hour ago. Don't suddenly pipe up and tell me to stop talking. You show some respect to your mother that you would even speak like that to me in front of everyone. I have no idea what's gone over you this past year, but you used to cheer all of us up, didn't he? All you do is cause fights, upsetting everybody. What's wrong with you? Yes, it's always been up to me to cheer everyone up. Well, it's bloody exhausting. Well, here it is. I'm 47 years 47. old. Yes, 47. And I'm too long in the tooth to go around fooling myself that all our work and toiling around to keep him churning bloody pamphlets out is worth the damn time, all right? Yes, Uncle Vanya, that's fine. Thank you. You have rehearsed these views many times. We have guests with us now. And I'll tell you why I never sleep. It's because I'm too fucking pissed off. Wasted my life away for what? Don't blame your principles for leading you here. Yeah, principles? You shared the very I same principles of professor. Well. I never shared his I principles. I can't believe you would even say it. To audience and you are happy to help. Oh, what fucking choice did I have? It's you who have failed, John, because you abandoned your what principles. What principles does he have? Your That's what I would like to failed. know. You have failed, John. How does he begin to discern his principles? Because some of us refuse to worship Pamphlet regurgitators like Air Professor up there. Oh, yes, of course, that's right. Don't equate laziness with rebellion. <laughs> because you never learned the difference. Because some of us refuse to worship nobody when we can see that there's no point. What do you mean by that? It's exactly as I say. I mean what I mean when I say what I say. What part of that confuses you? All of it? Some Just of it? Stop it! Oh. Both of you! Just stop it! I'm not saying anything. What did I say? Isn't the 
weather's so nice. I mean, it's not too hot and it's not too... Oh, I read something about that in the paper the other day. This is the perfect weather for... Slitting the wrist. The blood flow. Sorry, it's a... The crows could get them. I'm sorry. Excuse me, doctor. There's a man outside. It says there's been an accident. Where? The factory. When? Sometime this morning. They say someone's been crushed. Sometime this morning. Right. Well, I'll have to... Oh, doctor. Do come back for dinner, won't you? Oh, I'm afraid it's far too far to the factory. <coughs> I couldn't possibly keep you all waiting that long. How should I go if I don't know the way? I'll tell you what, I'll take a quick glass of that vodka. Of course, you all know who I'm like now. With this beard, the guy from Mop Trotsky's play. A man of large mustaches and tiny abilities. He who believes in the invisible yet doubts the things he sees. I disagree. I think it makes you look more distinguished. Older, distinguished. Have another before you go? Oh, no, thank you. Well, it's uh, been truly an honor and a delight to meet you. You should ever fill in an excursion. Well, so he knows the way to my place. Thank you. It's a small enough estate, 90 acres, but there's a lovely government forest beside us and a government orchard, and the old guy who takes care of it is always sick, so it's really on me to take care of it. Very nice for a wander, should you ever feel inclined. Sonia loves it. Yes, Sonia's told me all about it, and how well you look after everything. I hope it doesn't interfere with your real vocation too much. Only God knows our true vocation. <laughs> the forest is your true love. Oh, yes, it's just so interesting. Yeah, it's fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> I always heard that was an older man's work. You don't look more than, what, 37, 38? Well, thank you. <laughs> Nothing but tree after tree. You don't find that monotonous? Well, no. It's I'm... precisely the opposite. Dr. Ashroff plants new spans of forest every single year. He's received a bronze medal for it and a diploma. You don't mind me saying that. No, please. And he saved the old forest from being destroyed. We must go. I'll show you. And if you listen to what he says, in 30 minutes, it will change how you see the world. The world, no less. Don't listen to Vanya. I hadn't realized how much we depend on the forest. Did you know that the forest actually softens the climate? Oh, I, I've heard it all now. And when the climate is less severe, humans expend less energy. We become more responsive and we develop our culture and our language. The arts and science flourish in temperate climates. Women especially are shown more courtesy. It's been shown. Huh. Courtesy. <laughs> Look, it's a lovely idea, Ashraf. And I'm glad it makes Sonia so happy. But if you don't mind, I'll continue to make my nice fires out of logs and build my barns out of wood. Thank you very much. You can burn peat in your stoves and build your barns out of stone. Of course, chop down a few trees here and there, but why destroy the whole forest? I'm not destroying the As whole forest. As we speak, swaths of forest are being put to the axe. Without their roots, the soil dries up. Rivers, gone forever. Why? because you're too lazy to pick up your fuel from the ground? It's not up to me. We have the unique capacity, alone amongst creatures, to appreciate the miracle of creation. And what are we doing? Destroying the lot. I need a drink. Vanya always looks at me like I'm just so damn serious all the time. Right. I know I'm as cranky as the next guy, but there are moments, you know, when I go down past the peasant's woods or See a span of trees that I planted bursting into bloom. I realize that, to some degree, the climate is in my. No, the climate is in our power. Because of one small thing you or I do today, someone 100 years from now could be happier because of it. And I gotta tell you, that's, that does something to me, too. To my soul. Well, if you allow me the honor of allowing me to take my leave. When will we see you again? Oh, God, I don't know. Don't make it a month. Promise me that much. And as for 
you, Yvonne. Oh, now it's Yvonne. What are we going to do with you? Do what with me? Do you really have to antagonize your poor mother like that? She antagonizes me. And this morning, too, you had a go at poor Alexandre. He was really upset with you, you know. I can't help it if I loathe him. What's the point in loathing him? He's only as bad as anyone else and certainly no worse than you. Oh, you're one to talk? Don't think I don't notice the sheer effort it takes you just to live moment to moment. Oh yes, the effort and the boredom. Since when is it any of your business? Hey. And don't pretend it's because you have sympathy for me. Of course I have sympathy I for you. I heard you, Vanya. You have no pity for the woods or the forest or the birds or for women or for anyone else. That's not exactly what I said. And where is all this philosophy coming from everyone all of a sudden? Doctor. He has such an exhausted look on his face. I'm exhausted. Look at me. Yes, but he has an interesting face. Thanks. Oh. <laughs> Sonia's clearly mad about him. I can understand it. I'm sure you can. You know he's visited three times since I've been here. But who's counting? And I've always been too intimidated to speak with him. I've never even said hello or been nice to him. <laughs> now Sonia says he thinks I'm mean. I wonder why. <laughs> I mean, you do know why you and I get on so well, don't you? Because you like me. No. Because we're the most boring, tedious people on the whole estate. We are tedious. Don't look at me like that. I don't like it. How else am I supposed to look at you? I love you. <laughs> Stop. You're the only thing on earth that makes me happy. Makes me feel young. Makes me appreciate my life. Just let me sit with you. Let me look at you. Let me hear your voice. The chances of you feeling anything similar are practically zero. Oh, your mother is coming. Will you stop it? Don't send me away. Just let me sit with you and I'd be the happiest. Oh, you are driving me mad. Just leave me alone. Uh, where is everybody? Go back to sleep. I wasn't asleep. Was I? <laughs> Hey, Vanya, any news? <laughs> no. No. Alexandre. No. Alexandre. No. no. Hey, Alexandre, you're dreaming. Oh my god, I'm freezing. Your rug is falling off. Oh, Sonia. That's not Sonia, it's me. Oh, Lenoska. I'm sorry. Forgive me. The pain's back. I'll shut the window. No! No, it's fine. It's just. I fell asleep. I, I didn't even realize. I dreamt this my leg wasn't my own. It's that it belonged to someone else. It's agonizing. It's your gout, Alexander. No, this can't be gout. It must be something else. I'm like, what time is it? Yelena, did you find me that volume of Bachescope I asked you for? What? Can you find me that volume of Bachelor's Grove I asked you about? Why can't I? <coughs> it's as though I can't get a breath. You need sleep. You got none last night and now this tonight. I'm sorry. It's just these ideas running in my head. If I don't get them up and running, they'll be gone. And what of it? You're retired. Take your time. Accept. No, but you can't just turn your brain off. It's as though you're in a race against the clock. You know Turgenev suffered a heart attack because of his gout? Because of his pain. I mean, just bad. I mean, that's what could... I daren't even look in the mirror anymore. I see my father scowling back at me from his deathbed. He suffered a horrible death. And what's worse is you're fully aware of how revolting people find you. Do you know that you speak of your age as if it's our fault you're aging? <laughs> I speak objectively, Lenoska. I mean, look at you. 
you're young, you're healthy, you want to live, then why shouldn't you? I'm just saying it's a matter of time. Yelena, did you hear what I said? Yes, all right, please just stop. Stop what? What do you want from me? What? Stop hounding me. Hounding you? Why, yes, I've completely worn you out, haven't I? I mean, perfectly understandable if you just... Oh, oh yes, and go where? With what? Let's just sit and be quiet. You know what's really funny? When Vanya speaks, or his mother starts talking, everyone is scrupulously attentive to their drivel. I so much as say two words and suddenly everyone wants to kill themselves. <laughs> <laughs> you lose the right to the right Oh, to no one is denying you your rights. No one is disputing your rights. <sighs> you know, you spend your whole life growing and learning, developing your expertise, leading the way, and people follow you, and, and suddenly, suddenly you're old. You're from the past, and the past is gone. You end up living in some kind of tomb, but I still want to live. I want to publish great works. I want to be successful. And what's wrong with that? This was a mistake, you know? Coming out here. There's nothing here. It's like being dead, but you're not even allowed to be it. Oh, yes, well, time is killing me just as much as it's killing you. Papa, you asked for the doctor? He's been waiting for hours. I can't believe you'd do this again. What doctor? Dr. Ashrock, who else? Ugh. Ugh. That man knows as much about medicine as I do about beekeeping. What do you want? We can't keep sending for the medical faculty of St. Petersburg every time you get pins and needles. Let him have a look. No, I can't stand him. Right. Wonderful. Well, I'm not telling him. You can tell him yourself. Where are my glasses? What time is it? It's past midnight. Sonia, get me my drops from the table. How 
always think about poor Vera. She used to worry all the time about your legs. She would sit with me and cry. Do you remember? Sonia, you would sit with us too, but you wouldn't understand. Wait. Vanya, here. It's your watch. I know. My sister gave this to you. I want you to have it. All right. That was a lovely thing for you to do. Come on, this way. sick of myself. It's a perfect parallelogism. God, look at you. You're educated and intelligent. You should be working to reconcile us all, but you do nothing. Yelena, I need you to reconcile me to myself before I can think of any of that. Stop it. Take your hand away. Go away. Soon the rain will pass. Everything will be clean. Everything will breathe again. But I'll still be trapped here. Day, night, what's the difference? It's all the same to me now. Because I've wasted my life. Wasted my love in all the wrong places. Like the sun shining down a deep, dark hole. Utterly pointless. Vanya, do you know what happens every time you start talking to me about love? No, tell me. I feel completely dead. Well, that's no good. Well, I never know what to say to you. Good night. Elena, you know what really kills me? Shall I tell you? I don't even care if my life amounts to anything because it doesn't mean anything to anyone but to see you throwing your life away. What mad arrangement have you made? In your mind, I mean, to justify it. Simon, you're drunk. So what? Oh, get off of me. Go find the doctor. Where is he? In my room. Drinking. Yes, wonderful. What good does drinking do either of you? Kills the days. <laughs> of course. Excellent. You were so much nicer when you never drank. You never went around so sad as you do now. It's starting to wear us all out. Elena, you don't know how wonderful you are. I have asked you to stop, Banya. You're doing it on purpose now. <laughs> you disgust me. This is nothing. Our conversations always end this way. Ten years ago, I used to visit her at my sister's house. She was 17, and I was only 37. That's when I should have. I should have proposed to her then. She probably would have said yes. She wouldn't have known any better. She'd be my wife now. The storm would have woken her up. She'd come looking for me. Take her in my arms, and I'd say, shh, it's all right. It's only a storm. I'm here. <sighs> These are the thoughts that swirl in my head incessantly now that I am old. She never understands what I'm saying, lecturing me as if I'm to blame for the dreadful state of her world. And her husband. The professor. I worked like an ox to keep him going, to keep his money coming in. We squeezed every drop from this estate, me and Sonia. Vegetable oil, dried peas, you name it, we sold it. Kept nothing for ourselves. We were proud of his position, you see. It made us all feel like someone lived and breathed for him to tell you the truth. And now, he's back. Not a penny to his name. 
Not a single page of anything he wrote is read by anyone. He's nothing. A soap bubble. Pup. And I was cheated out of my life. For what? For nothing. And here's the funny part. I always thought I was cleverer than him. Oh, for God's sake, play something! People are asleep. He won't play. I promise to keep your voice down. I will play very quietly. I'm not able to play properly, you know? What are you always carrying the damn thing around for? Yeah, with my father's. It's an affectation, really. Well, affect to play something. Uh, all alone, Vanya? No ladies? No bed for the master, no moon in the sky. Oh, my love, oh, oh, you open the door. Your mother is sleeping, the lambs in the fold, and the mountain do call to the cloud. No bed for the master, no moon in the sky. Mother is sleeping, the lambs in the fold, and the mountains do call to the clouds, and the mountains do call to the clouds, and the mountains do call to the clouds. To the clouds. <laughs> I had actually managed to get some damn sleep, and then the damn rain woke me up. What time is it anyway? The devil knows. I thought I heard Yelena's voice. She's gone. I see what you mean, by the way. About what? Her eyes. Amphetamine? Morphine? Prescriptions from everywhere. Kharkov, Moscow. Think he's putting it on? No, he's sick. What's got you so damn miserable? Nothing. Ah, it's a sweet torture it is, hmm? To be in love with another man's wife? We're not in love. We're friends. Oh, friends already. Vanya, my boy. A man and a woman can only be friends in this order. First, as acquaintances. How do you do? How do you do? Second, as lovers. <laughs> and then, and only after this can they be friends. You're a bloody Bulgarian. That, that is true. When I drink, because then all of you and everyone that I know, my friends, become as insignificant as insects. Mere microbes. For God's sake, Waffles, play something else, please. You're waking the whole house. Just play the song that I like. The other one. You will be quiet. Yes, yes, I promise, I promise. Right. Oh, Vanya, there's no more brandy left. I say, when dawn breaks, we go to my place, hmm? Come with me, Vanya. I have a new medical assistant. He brews his own spirits. He can only say, all right. Only he all says, all white. <laughs> oh, he's a total reprobate. I already once killed a guy in a card game. All white, he says, as he leads me far and straight. All white, I say, but I am very, very far from all white. Oh, come on, Vanya. <laughs> Drunk with the doctor again. You're like two saddled tramps. It's horrible. The hay's been cut. Nothing's in bail. The whole barn's getting soaked up in the storm. You lead me to do everything. Why are you crying? No, it's... You 
look like your mother for a moment. Where is she? My poor sister. Dead. If she only knew. If she knew what? I don't know. Brandy left to drink. I'm going home now anyway. It's raining. Wait till it's bright. We can have breakfast. Oh, the storm's gonna go straight over. And please, don't call me to see your father anymore, okay? I tell him it's gout and he says it's rheumatism. I tell him to lie down and suddenly he's up walking all over the estate. I mean, this morning he wouldn't even speak to me. He's so spoiled. Yeah. Would you like something to eat? Yes, I would actually. Nighttime snacks are my favorite. There's usually something in here. My father has always had great successes in his whole life, and they've all spoiled him. Look, cheese. Oh, oh God, I really haven't eaten anything in two days. I don't know, Sonia. You're the only one here that I can speak frankly with. I mean, your Uncle Vanya, well, he's depressed, you know. Your father, your grandmother. God, your stepmother, too. I. I don't know how you do it. Suffocate. What about my stepmother? What? You said my stepmother, Elena? Oh. I mean, don't get me wrong. She's beautiful. Stunning, really, but... Everything about a person should be beautiful. Not just their face, but their thoughts, their ideas, their, their soul should be beautiful. I mean, she is... Beautiful. But Jesus Christ, she takes no responsibility for anything. I mean, perhaps I'm being too severe on her. Who am I to judge a creature like that, hmm? Me and your Uncle Bonnie were just two grumpy old men fed up with life. You're not fed up with life. Not with life, but just this stupid provincial life. I absolutely despise this kind of life. But your personal life. Oh, God knows there's nothing to speak of there. You know how if you ever get lost in the woods at night and, and, and suddenly you see light and you just strike out for it? You don't care or you don't notice about the branches hitting your face. You just go straight towards it. That's how it is for me. Working. I work and I work and I work. And I get hit by all the... There's no, there's no light for me anymore. I, I no longer expect anything for myself, I mean. Is there no one? I mean... Ah, the peasants. Well, they're all afraid of you. <laughs> and that supposed intelligentsia, well, they don't bother with them anymore. They saddle up behind you and they say things like, Oh, he's a bit strange, isn't he? Oh, he's a vegetarian. Oh, he's always in the forest. They don't know what to call you, so they label you some damn psychopath. Oh, no, please, no more. What's wrong? This isn't like you. You normally have such a lovely voice, and you're a beautiful man. You're not like anyone I've ever met. Oh, so many You know what I mean. You're not like ordinary men who go about drinking and playing cards. You hate to see people destroy things, yet you destroy yourself. I'm asking you not to. I will never drink again. You're giving me your word on that? My word of honor. All right. Well, thank you. All right. That's settled. I'm sober now, and that is the way I will stay until I die. Of course, now it's probably too late. I just work myself too hard. No feeling. No... During Lent, early this year, Sonia, I, I lost a 
patient. And do you know what the funny thing is? Yes. I'm going to go. Mikhail! Say... Say I had a friend, or a younger sister, and say... Say that she... That you... That you found out that she was in love with you. I mean... What would you? I mean, would you? I wouldn't do anything. I'd tell her that I couldn't love her. I can't even think straight anymore. Let's come here. Thank you for the hospitality and the grub and just being such a wonderful girl. So, what? Nothing. What? Nothing. Just thank you, all right? I'm gonna go out this way, because if I go out that way, I'll run into your uncle Vanya, and they'll never get home tonight. Goodbye. <laughs> he gives me nothing, yet I'm so happy. <sighs> he keeps his heart and his soul from me. Yet, I'm so happy! Why am I so happy? <laughs> oh, a beautiful man, I said. You have a lovely voice. Was that too forward of me? I mean, I don't think so. I mean, I love his voice, why shouldn't I? But yet, I spoke to him about my friend, a younger sister, and he didn't even understand a word. Oh, Lord, how could you make me so plain? Last Sunday at church, there was a woman behind me who said, she's so kind and generous, but it's such a pity that she's so plain, that she's so plain. Where's the doctor? Gone home. Oh. Sonia? Hmm? How much longer do you plan on being like this with me for? Like what? Like this way, this. I'm not being any way with you. What way? It doesn't matter. I just want us to make up. Well, that's what I want. Is uh, Papa asleep? Of course he isn't. He's in his room. He isn't speaking to me now. Who's this for? Mikhail, the doctor. He hadn't eaten all day. Let's have some wine. Yes! We'll sit and drink a toast to each other out of the same glass. Somehow. Don't cry. No, it's just me. No, it's all right. I know why you're angry, and it's perfectly understandable. You think I married your father to get ahead. No! It's all right. It's what everyone thinks. But if you believe in oaths, I give you my oath on this. That I married him for love. I was drawn to him. A famous man. A man of learning. I was captivated by it. And it was not real. The love was not real. I thought it was real. At the time, I thought it was real. So please, don't blame me. 
You've given me that punishing look since the day we got married. Let's just forget about it. You really shouldn't give people that look, Sonia. You have no idea how crushing it is. To think that someone doesn't believe you, it's actually impossible to live, actually. I'm sorry. I want to be friends. But honestly, are you happy? Of course I'm not happy. Well, do you think you'd be happier if your husband was younger? <laughs> Don't be so naive, of course I would. <laughs> Go on, ask me anything, anything you'd like. Do you like the doctor? The doctor, that's where we're going, is it? <laughs> yes, very much, and I know how much you do. I have that stupid look on my face, do I? I get it whenever he's here, and when he's gone, I can still hear him, I can still smell him. I stare into the night, and I can see him there, plain as day. This is so embarrassing. You don't think anyone can hear us, do you? We could go to my room. Oh, tell me what you think of him. Tell me something. What can I tell you? You see how clever he is. All the things he can do, there's nothing he can't do. Works with his hands. He heals people in the forest. Well, that's because he's... It doesn't matter what he does, whether it's the forest or medicine or... He has talent. He has insight. Yes. His mind is free to imagine. That's right. So that when he plants a sapling, he already visualizes a full-grown tree, and he understands what that means to someone's future happiness. I know. Can you imagine how horrible his life must be? All that potential, and how does he spend his day? Trudging through impassable mud on the road, vast distances and blizzards arriving too late to help some poor, doomed soul in some shed somewhere. No wonder he drinks. He's had 30 years of it. I know. I'd love to see you happy. See you both happy. I've given up on it for myself. You? I'm just... a footnote at the end of your father's life. And... There are no happy endings in footnotes. Just optional details, like me. <laughs> Why are you smiling? The doctor, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'd love to play something. Oh, please do. We're never going to sleep now. Play something. Just ask your father if it's all right. Music always gets on his nerves when he's sick. He won't mind. Just ask, just to be sure. Sonia. Sonia! Mm. What time is it? Four minutes since the last time you asked me a quarter to one. A quarter to one? A quarter to one. Fifteen minutes until we hear why the distinguished professor has summoned us all to the drawing room. He has something he wishes to announce to the world at one o'clock. Something about his business affairs. Business affairs? What business affairs? Uncle! What? Look at her. She's practically falling off that bench. Somebody should paint her and call it... Lazy... Afternoon. No. Ah! Ah! Lazy... Life... Lady! Mm, no. Ah! Lady on a lazy... Oh, shut up. It's your voice droning on and on. How can I help it? Surprised you don't talk yourself to sleep. Ugh, literally 
dying of boredom. I could feel it right here. What the hell is one supposed to do with oneself? There's nothing. I could find you plenty to do. Oh, like what? There's a million things I need doing. Oh, yes, farm work. Or teaching. Children from miles around here can't read or write, you know. No, thank you. Help the old people. The sick people? Uncle Vanya and I used to always enjoy going to the market to sell flour. That's something that flour? we Flour? Sell flour? I don't know how to do any of that. Only people in books teach beggars to read and feed sick peasants. Do you really think that's me? It could be you. You haven't even tried. I bet, I bet children would love you. Don't lose heart, Elena. I know it's hard. You don't know what to do. But look, we're all doing it to each other. It's contagious. I mean, Uncle Vanya has all but retired, as it seems. And I'm no better. Here's me hiding here with both of you, avoiding work, looking for idle chat. Even the doctor, he's practically abandoned his practice. We used to be lucky to see him once a month, but now he's here every day. And the forest be damned. I think. I think you put a spell on him, actually. She's right, you know. I have a feeling you have mermaid's blood in your veins. And we're all just sailors being lured to the rocks. And we're just drowning in your water. Oh. <laughs> so for once in your life, let yourself go. Shut <laughs> up, Vanya. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. <laughs> really? In a world full of ugliness, why has God chosen me to be so handsome? That's exactly what I was thinking. It's because you deserve it. You deserve to be handsome. Well, I can't help it. We should have a ball here. Proper dancing, proper music. And invite who exactly? Hmm, I don't know. Someone interesting. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> what? You don't look at me that way. Like what? Like that. You've done that to me once too often. And I was only kidding. You're not a mermaid. You're a giant squid. <laughs> and as a token of my sorrow, I will bring you the last of the roses from the garden. Sad roses. Autumn roses. Sad roses. Autumn roses. <laughs> September already. How are we going to live through a whole winter here? Where's the doctor? In Vanya's room, working on his maps. Mm -hmm. I need to ask you something. What about? <laughs> what about, what about? <laughs> you know what about. There now, I know. I'm so ugly. You're not ugly. I am. Of course you aren't. You have such lovely hair and expressive eyes. <sighs> Lovely hair, nice teeth. People only say that kind of thing about women who aren't good looking. You know, I've been in love with a doctor for six years now. More than I've ever loved my own mother. I hear his voice. I feel his hands squeezing mine. Every time I look at the door, I expect him to come in. And when he actually arrives, it's like he doesn't even see me. I pray every night for some change. The next day, I go up to him and we start talking. But I mean, I hate myself. Even last Sunday, Uncle Vanya took me aside to ask me what was wrong. I just told him, I'll be all right. I have a cold. But everybody knows. They must know. So he must know? The doctor? I don't think he's ever noticed. Well, he's an unusual man. Look, let me speak with him. No, I won't say anything. I'll just... Let me... It won't be difficult. I'll find out. He won't even notice I'm doing it. But we have to know. Yes or no. And if it's no, he'll have to stop coming here. And it'll be easier then, not seeing him every day. He said he wanted to show me some chart or map or something. Go get him and tell him it suits me now. You'll tell me exactly what he says? The whole truth. No matter what it is, 
It's got to be better than the uncertainty you live with now. Yes. Yes, I'll tell him you want to see his maps. But sometimes uncertainty and not knowing something can be better. Really? No. No, I'll get him. She tells me her deepest secret. But there's nothing I can do. And there's no one in the world that can help because he simply isn't in love with her. I mean, you could say, well, why doesn't he just marry Sonia? At his age, he'd be lucky to have her. She's bright, she's clever, she's good at the account. She hasn't a bad bone in her body. But of course it isn't about any of that, is it? She just wants him to love her. And you know, I could see it. You know, from her point of view, living here surrounded by all these gray blobs with their pointless breakfast and sleepwalking and napping and into this arrives someone so different, so alert and alive. So, handsome and interesting and attractive. Like waking to find the moon rising in your bedroom window. Of course you'd lose yourself into him. It's even happened to me a little. It's perfectly understandable. He's funny. He says interesting things things, unexpected things. Who wouldn't find that attractive? Uncle Vanya says I have mermaid's blood in my veins. Let yourself go for once in your life. Maybe I should. Fly away from all these sleepy faces and forget I was ever here. Of course, I'm far too much of a coward for that. The doctor comes here every day now. I know why he comes. I should have fallen to my knees in front of Sonia and begged her forgiveness just now. I know why he comes. Sad roses, autumn roses. Hello? Oh, hello. You promised me you'd show me. Well, I'm no artist. No, I'd like to see. All right, well, you've been warned. Where were you born? Petersburg. Petersburg. And you studied there? Yes, music. At the conservatoire? Yes. <coughs> That's very impressive. I doubt you're finding it is that interesting. No, it's just that I know so little about living in the country. I mean, I've read so many books. I love Tregenium, but um, reality is a little more... Real? Yes. Bonnie lets me keep all my things in this room here. When I get tired of me, to the point of total collapse. Well, I pack all my things into a bag, and come out here and I work on things. Bonnie and Sonia, they're so good to me. They, they indulge me. Oh. They click away, counting on their abacuses, doing their accounts, and... I sharpen my pencils and we all sit in silence together. I always feel so warm and content. It's a simple pleasure, really. I don't do it often. Maybe once a month. The math. <laughs> it's beautiful. So anyway, here's us right here. Where? Right here. Oh, yes, there we are. Anywhere you see these different colored lines here, there are once Wild elk, horses, wildcats. Oh. Not very big, but bears, antelope, <laughs> exotic birds, a whole cosmos of creatures. Really? Oh, yes. These crosses here, the old hamlets and villages, small farm sets. And here, here is where the air takes you to gather to practice the old religion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're all gone now. So, the blue lines here, horned cattle, wild elk. This is all a hundred years ago, right? Looking at the past. 
Now, 25 years ago, two-thirds of the forest is gone. There is some elk, but the, old, the goats have all gone. Some blue, but not very much. But I'll keep going. It's this. This. This is the present. There is some green, not very much. The elk have disappeared. No swans now, no grouse, no farms, no monasteries, no mills. In other words, this is a picture of steady, irreversible decline. Ten more years and the destruction will be complete. You say, well, that's progress. Nothing stays the same. No sense in blabbing on about the good old days. And yes, that's fine if in place of the ruined forest, we were seeing decent roads and schools with better, healthier, educated people. But look, there's nothing of the sort. Swamps, mosquitoes, mud tracks, typhus, diphtheria, the same old backbreaking struggle for existence. Stagnation and decay. Who can take responsibility for anything when they're hungry and they're sick? If you're trying to keep your child from the pain and cold, you'll snatch at anything that'll keep you warm for just a few hours. But without realizing it, you're destroying the very habitat that sustains you because you can't think about the future. Who has time for that? That's a luxury. I, I can see by your face that I've alarmed you. And that's oh no, it's not that. Yes, I mean, it's all terrible, but um, my mind is... Well, of course. And I... I wanted to ask you about something, but I'm finding it difficult to know where to begin. Ask me about what? It's really harmless. Um, sit down. Or, you don't have to sit down. It's not that. Um, I know this young person, and... I'm just going to be really honest with you, and like two friends, we can have this chat, all right? And then we forget we ever spoke about it, all right? All right. This matter concerns my stepdaughter, Sonia. Do you like her? Yes or no? Of course I do. Yes, of course. But do you like her as a woman? What do you mean, as a woman? You haven't noticed anything over time? Uh, no, should I? All right. You don't love Sonia. That much is clear. Listen, she is in agony over this, so it would be better for everyone if you stopped coming by so often. Oh, wait, are you serious? Look, my days with that kind of thing are over. But uh, even if they weren't, where would I find the time for that kind of thing? Oh, God, what an unpleasant and embarrassing conversation. Thank God it's over. Look, let's just forget it. The weight has lifted, and you should go. You're an intelligent person. I know you understand. No, no, I, I understand. Just it, If you had asked me this a, a month or two ago, things were... I would have given it some second thought, but things have... Why are you asking this now? What do you mean? I mean, why now? I don't... You think you're being clever, or...? No, I don't. I mean, suppose Sonya is suffering because of me. What is it to you? How can you ask me that? Look, I am too old and I've seen too much. You can't pretend that you don't know. Oh, doctor. I beg myself not to return here, yet here I am every day. I'm hardly at home and I've given up everything else. So please, don't pretend that it doesn't give you some satisfaction to see me like this. Of course we all like to see you, Doctor. What do you mean, see you like this? I mean like this! Like some helpless lost animals in the woods at night. But the fox knows it, exactly wh where I am, D don't you? What fox? I mean you. There it is. But you knew that before I even stepped in the room. Before you sent for me. I didn't send for you. Yes, you did. You're out of your mind. And suddenly now you're shy. I'm not shy. I'm just not what you take me for. All right. I'm going to go. And I won't come back. But please, tell me what we can meet. You know that I'm mad about you. Oh, God, this 
Listen, I swear. Why well, swear? There's no need to swear anything. Listen, you are beautiful. Doc, you've forgotten yourself, please. Yes, yes. Please. You have to know that I love you. That I'm mad about you. We must meet. Mm, doctor, you have to leave. No. Yes. No. Tomorrow, two o'clock. Say you'll come in the forest. Say yes. Yes. Oh. Uh. No, it's it's fine. It's all right. Uh, hello, Ivan. Vanya, buddy. Uh, four things. You know, the weather is it's, it's much better than it should be. It was overcast this morning. I thought, oh, we'll definitely have rain. But look, it's a lovely autumn day. The sun is shining. And the only thing is, uh, well, the days get shorter and shorter. And there's uh, nothing we can do about that. My head, my tummy. Ugh. Where the hell is everybody? I hate this house. It's like a damned maze. 26 rooms. Anybody wanders off. You don't see them for days. Someone tell Maria Vasilyevna and Yelena Andreevna to come in. I'm here. Oh, well, all right then. Ladies and gentlemen, please sit. What did he say? I'll tell you later. He's not coming anymore. That's it, isn't it? You know, one can come to terms with ill health, but you know what'll really kill you? Boredom. I feel like I've fallen out the bottom of the earth and landed on some alien planet. Will you all please sit down? Sonia! Sonia! Can't she hear me? Uh, Nana, you too, Nana. Please sit. Let us. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, Romans, Russians, lend me your ears. <laughs> Where's that from, Waffles? What? Where's that from? What, what from? <laughs> you probably don't need me so. No, 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 no. On the contrary, Ivan Petrovich. This concerns you. Please sit. What business of yours could possibly concern me? Vanya, I've offended you. Have I annoyed you in some way? If so, please forgive me. No, just don't be so goddamn condescending. What do you want? And finally, here's my mom. Ladies and gentlemen, I shall begin. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I have gathered you all here today to inform you, to inform you that the government inspector general is coming to visit us. Government inspector? It's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> However, joking aside, I have gathered you all here today, ladies and gentlemen, to ask for your help and your advice. And knowing as I do your customary kindness, I hope that I shall receive it. I am a man of learning, a man of books, and I've always been a stranger to the practical life. I need guidance from people in the know, and so I ask you, Ivan Petrovich, and you, Ilya Ilya, and you, Mama, and for your views on this. The fact is mene omnes una nox, <laughs> that is. One night awaits us all. I'm old, I'm sick, and I need to put my affairs regarding my property in order. Oh, I'm not thinking of myself. My life is already at an end, but I have a young wife and an unmarried daughter. I must think of them. All right, here it is. It has become impossible for me to continue living in the country. I was not created for the country. I can't work here. I'm blocked up and I can't do it. I've always said this. I know. You need the movement and bustle of the city, the salon and intrigue and the gossip. That's who you are. I know, Mama. You know me better than I know myself. Without that, you're... I know. And there it is. But to live in the city on the means which we are receiving from this estate is impossible. So, 
what to do. If, for example, we sell the forest, we get a lump sum and live in the city for a year on the proceeds. About a year or two. But once we sell it, it's gone. And the money's gone. So we must seek out such measures as will guarantee it's a constant, eternal, fixed income going forward and for the rest of our lives. I have therefore devised just such a measure and have the honor to submit it for your consideration. I am not going to bamboozle you with financial detail. I'll spell it out in general outline. Our estate yields on average 2% per annum. However, if we liquidate our assets, i.e. the whole estate, and convert it into cash, hmm? which can then be converted into stocks and shares, i.e. plowed through the stock exchange. I mean, really, forcefully, you know, rammed in there. According to my calculations, we will receive easily 4 or even 5% per annum, notwithstanding a lump sum of a few thousand rubles which I would retain in order to purchase a modest villa in Finland, so I might continue my work during the holiday, and where, of course, you would all be most welcome to visit, which I hope goes without saying. Now, what do you think? Just a moment. I think my hearing must be failing. Can you repeat what you just said? I'll convert the money into stocks and shares and with the excess remaining by a villa in Finland. No, I got that part about Finland. There was something else you said. Oh, it's quite simple, Vanya. I propose to sell the estate. That's the bit. Sell the estate. Brilliant idea. It's just what do you think myself my mother, Nana, Waffle, Sonia will do with ourselves? Oh, well, that's what we're here to discuss. <laughs> what do you think I'm doing here? Right, just bear with me a moment. Up till now, I was under the impression that this estate belonged to Sonia. My father bought it as a dowry for my sister Vera, therefore under the law passed down to her daughter, Sonia. Yes, under the law, if you want to be pedantic about it. Of course the estate belongs to Sonia. No one is disputing that. I'm proposing that this is done for Sonia's benefit. Right. And I'm struggling to understand all this, although I must admit I may have lost my reason some time ago. Sean, please don't contradict Alexandre. Who else among us has his learning? Who else can know what's best for us? If that's what the professor decides, it's settled. We need a drink of water. We need to be practical. Getting agitated isn't going to help anyone, Banya. Look, I'm not saying my plan is ideal. I wish we didn't have to do it. If there's unanimous objection, I may even be obliged to reconsider. But that's what we need to ascertain. Right. Your Excellency, uh, perhaps I could be of some, some, some assistance. My brother, uh, Grigori Ilyich's wife's brother, uh, perhaps you know him, uh, Konstantin Trofimovich Ligatomov. He holds a master's degree from Dubajin. The question of unanimity is one that he holds in great regard. So you are absolutely correct to pursue its endeavors. Hold on a minute, Waffles. We're talking business now. The philosophy can wait. Actually, actually, here, ask him. This estate was bought from his uncle. Ask him what? Because he'll tell you this estate was bought for 95,000 rubles. My father paid 70,000 down with a remaining debt of 25. The only way this estate can be afforded is if I renounce my inheritance. This is correct. I signed over my shares in favor of my sister, your first wife, whom I passionately loved, all right, to make it all possible. Furthermore, I then worked like a dog for the next 20 years to pay off all of the debt. So in actuality, it cost me double what it would have cost anyone else. And I still have nothing to show for it on paper. Nothing, and you propose to sell it out from underneath me? I regret I started this discussion. The only reason this estate is free of debt is because of my personal efforts. I'm the reason it's worth selling at all. Except now that I'm too old to do anything about it, I'm gonna get thrown out of my ear. Is this just willful misunderstanding, or what are you saying? I'm saying for the last 25 fucking years, I managed this estate. I sent you more money than any land agent ever would have, and I raised your daughter for you in your absence, and you have never once thanked me. Sean, you stop this now. And, 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 and that entire time, and even now, I have never received more than 200 rubles a year. 200 rubles a year! Children in the city get more pocket money than that, and it has never crossed your mind as to add a ruble more. Vanya, for Christ's sakes, how was I to know? You could have taken more for yourself. 
as much as you wanted. I would never have known. Why didn't I steal the money? I realize now I should have. That would have been the right thing to do because I wouldn't be a beggar now facing the street. Shut! No one is facing the street. Vanya, my old pal, don't do this to yourself. Everything can be discussed. Look, my hands are shaking too. Let's have a cup of tea. We can discuss oh, 25 years trapped in here like a rat running round pipe. Trapped in here, still living with my mother, never going anywhere. Blue in the face, telling Sonia what a great man you are, how frightfully busy you must be with your fame and your works and your books. All those nights we should have been resting or meeting people or being sociable or just having some time of our of our own. God, we've wasted them away. God, when I think of it, Anya, oh, no, please, it's not worth I it. I don't understand what it is you want. But we all been duped, hadn't we? That you were some form of higher being that understood more than we could ever see. But my eyes have been open a long time now, friend. I see it all. Of course you do. Yes, I do. And what is it, pray tell, that you see? What great insight have you to impart to the world? Oh, it's very simple. You lecture everybody about art and politics and life and people, but you haven't the faintest understanding of art or politics or people or the way real people think and feel or need to be loved. All those essays of yours, I struggled to get through thinking I was stupid because I couldn't make head nor tail of them. I realize now you've been having us all on. This is pointless. There's no point talking to him when he's like this. I'll be in my room. No, you don't get away that easily. Sonia, please just let him go. You've ruined my life. You've destroyed me. Don't you understand that? I can't, I can't, I'm going. And what in God's name do you want from me, man? What do you want me to do about your life? What life? If you think this estate is yours, why don't you just take it? Have it. You think I need it? I'll be done in a few years. I have no need of it. What are you talking about? It's not yours to give me. I'm leaving here today. Do you hear me? I can't do this. Oh, Lenoska. I should have just lived a normal life. Continued my writing, I could have been another Schopenhauer or another Dostoevsky. Oh, yes, of course. Oh, Mama, what am I going to do? You will listen to the professor. We all live under sufferance. I'm not going to beg. Listen, Maria, no one has to beg. This is a proposal. It's a discussion. Yes, yes, I know what it is. Please, Vanya, some decorum. Decorum? Decorum! Yes, decorum! To think that you had the good fortune to be born a man, a human being with agency and respect! And what have you done with it? Sweet damn all! What I wouldn't have done with that freedom! The time to pull your boots on and fight for your rights was long before this. That day is long past. So you choose to blame everyone else. But you're too vain to even see that. Don't ask me what to do. I, I don't know. I have no idea. It's all right. It's fine. I know what to do. You think you're going to forget about me? Just wash your hands of us and be gone? That's what you think, isn't it? Another Schopenhauer. That's what we need. I hear him every night, you know. He's in the room below me, yelling in his sleep. I offered him, move into one of the rooms in the village. I'll pay for it. Move into one of the barns. We'll fix it up. But no, not good enough. Nothing's good enough. So that's it. I'm moving out. It's done. It's settled. Yes, we're leaving. We have to pack and we have to do it now. But Papa, you don't, you don't understand. It's just, Papa Vanya and me too. We both just, we never. No one asked a man to be a non-entity, Sonia. I never forced him to achieve nothing. He's managed that all by himself. But Papa, it's just Uncle Vanya. Grandmama, and me too. We, we copied out your papers for you, translated them for you, corrected them. No one needed to correct them. We annotated them, bound them for publication. I could have gotten anyone to do that. Why didn't you just oh, hire me? No. As soon as our stay work was complete, we were straight back in here. I mean, we wanted to. The papers were all over the floor. I'm, I'm not saying it very well. I'm just asking you to be compassionate. Compassionate? Yes, yeah, show some compassion. Don't tell me I don't have compassion, Sonia. It's too late. We need to be practical. 
No one wants to face the truth in this house. That's Oh, the for issue. God's sake, Alexander, go and explain it to him. Jesus Christ, I've explained it. Someone else tell him. Uh, Sonia, you realize I'm doing this for your benefit, too. You do realize that. You tell him. There's no way out unless we all want to putrefy and mummify together in this tomb. Is that what he wants? Is that what you want for yourself, Sonia? Sonia! Don't make Sonia do it! Go to Vanya! <laughs> Go to him? Yes, you! Who else? All right! All right. Don't be upset. If anyone thinks it'll help, I'll go to him. Be gentle, Alexandre. Alexandre, be kind and understanding. Let him calm down. No one is more understanding than me, Yelena. That's the problem. I've been far too understanding for far too long. Chuck. The geese scat cat gag and nobody minds, so they stop. They stop. I feel your hands shaking. They feel as though you've been out in the snow. Some lime tea and raspberry tea. Everything will be right as rain. My poor orphan girl. Doesn't Nana make everything better? Get away from me! I have oh, something to show you! Come back! The devil will Get find Get Nana! Like Hide it now! It'll only take a second! No! Ah! Hide it! Stop that! Something belonging to me. I don't have 
have it. Whatever you think I have, I don't have it. Vanya, I am keeping my temper. I can't be here. You understand me? Get back what you took, and I'll be gone. I haven't. Right. Then I'm going nowhere. And if you force me to, I will take it off of you. I mean physically. All right. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right! Do what you want with me. Oh, I've made such a total fool of myself. Would it be so bad if I would have hit him? But to miss him from three feet away, twice! You had better luck shooting yourself. But what's worse? No one does a thing about it. No one tries to arrest me because they think I'm sick in my head. They think I'm pitiful. I saw you with her in your arms. That's right. And you know what I have to say about that? <laughs> Mother Earth is mad at sustaining the pair of you. And again I say, Besides, don't flatter yourself. Nobody thinks you're crazy. Everybody just thinks you're an idiot. <laughs> One has been fatally starved of love. In other words, you're completely normal. This is worse than any physical pain, you know? The shame. What am I going to do? What the hell can I do? There's nothing you can do. <gasps> there must be something. I'm 47 years old. If I live until I'm 60, that's another 12. 13. 13 years! <laughs> How do I live in 13 more years of this? How do you fill up 13 fucking years? Just think, if you could wake up one clear, tranquil morning, and your whole past and everything is forgotten, then you can start a whole new life. Oh, come on, Vanya. We don't get a new life. Old codgers like me and you, this is our life. Our situation is hopeless. We're stuck here now. Don't say that. I'm only telling you the truth, Vanya. Give me something. My head is running like a train. Stop it, Vanya! I'm sorry. Come here. Mom. Listen. In a hundred or two hundred years, this this is what I think about, okay? The people then, they'll they'll have it all figured out. They'll look back on us and they'll say, how sad it is. All those people were just so unhappy. But you and I, me and you, here's what we have for it. Are you listening? When you and I, and Ely Ilyich, and Nana, and your mama all slumbering in our graves, we'll be visited by such beautiful, pleasant visions. I don't think we realize we're sleeping. I know, so that be, huh? Huh? You know, Vanya, you and I are the only two intelligent people that have ever lived around here. And I really feel like in the last, what, 10 years or so, we've really let this stupid provincial life just really get in on us and, and, and kill us in a way. And I, wait, wait a second. Don't start distracting me with all this yak, yak, yak. Give back what you took. I don't have it. Vanya, you've taken an entire bottle of morphine from my back. If you really want to kill yourself, walk out into the forest and put a bullet into your brain. But do not do it with my medicine. They'll think I gave it to you and then I'll be fired. It's enough that I have to do your post morning without it being my last job, Vanya. Oh. Uh, Sonia. 
Uh, I'm, I'm supposed to be gone a few hours ago. But uh, your Uncle Vanya is taking a bottle of morphine from my back. It's already getting late, so would you please ask me to give it back? Give it back this minute! Why would you frighten us like that? I am at least as unhappy as you are. Probably even more so. But I'm not giving up. I'll endure it to the bitter end. And I'm not doing it on my own, so you better hang on with me, or else I'll kill you. <laughs> oh, Uncle Vanya, for me, give it back. Sonia, you'll have something for me to do? I promise, as soon as everyone is gone, we'll sit down to work, just the two of us, all right? There is an absolute ton of invoices. We've never let it pile up like this our whole lives. Right, well, I better, uh... Vanya, we're... We're leaving. Alexandre wants to see you before we go. Oh, God! You'll go! Make your peace with him, Vanya. I'll come with you. Promise me you move away from here. Yes, I will, presently, but... You're frightened. Is it really so terrible to, to be loved? Yes. And stay, stay, and tomorrow at the orchard... No, we're leaving. Which is why I can look at you. One thing I should like when you think of me, to think well of me. If you can't, I should like you to respect me. I beg you to stay. I, I beg you to stay. Admit it. There's not one thing in the world for you to turn to. Sooner or later, you shall have to face the fact. In Kharkov, and Curse, somewhere. Why not here? Why not right now? Just throw everything up and, and begin again. In such a lovely autumn, we have Beautiful homes, run down country estates, right out of a turgain, if oh, not- you're funny. You're a funny man. Am I? And I'm angry with you. I I'm sorry. But I'll think of you with pleasure. Why is that? You're an original. We're never going to see each other again. I'll tell you. Why hide it? I was quite tempted. I was taken with you. So there. Shake hand and part as friends. Please, don't think ill of me. Yes. Well, goodbye then. You know, this is... <coughs> this is strange. I'm sure you are a good, kind, warm-hearted person. I'm, I'm sure of it. But what, what is there in your nature? Something. I mean, here you come, you and your husband, and, and industrious people busy with something, neglect their duties and waste whole months ministering to you, talking of you, buzzing around you, worrying for your husband's gout, you want for this or the other thing. It's all become in, entangled in your your idleness. How is that? I was affected. One whole month I haven't done a thing. People are falling ill. The peasants graze their cattle on my newly planted forest. Everything that I've cared about is decaying. Decaying. Your husband and you, where you, where you light, you seem to spread decay. 
sorry. I've overstated myself. Yet, yet, and yet, had you stayed, I, I feel something, something quite terrible would have come to pass. For me and for you, too. And you know it. Don't you? Yes, you do. So, so, finita, a commedia. Go and goodbye. You take this pencil as a momentum. Isn't that something? You come, we meet. No sooner it seems that you're gone. That's the way the world is, it seems. But will you do this one thing for me? While no one is here, before Vanya comes back with some bouquet of roses for you. A goodbye kiss. Just one. For goodbye? Yes. Right, well up. Uh, I wish you all the best. As I do. Whatever. Whatever, whatever. Yes, a kind of guide as to how one should live one's life. How wonderful. <laughs> I've accepted Vanya's apologies, and I ask that you forgive me too. All right? And everything will go back as the same Goodbye. as before. Goodbye. I'll send you the same amount as before, Goodbye. all right? Goodbye. All right? <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> oh, Alexandre. Please have your photograph taken in the city. I want to see you both looking fine and urbane and you make sure he does now. What are we going to do? Oh my, it's for the best. Goodbye, Your Excellency. <laughs> Don't forget about us, all right? I, yes, yes. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, all. Look, I do thank you for the pleasure of your company. I applaud your ideas and your enthusiasms and your impulses, but allow an old man to make a parting remark before he goes. It is not enough to think. One must work. Do you hear me? One must do some real work in the working world. We must be practical. Ladies and gentlemen, goodbye. Probably never see you again. Oh, Vanya. Dear sweet Vanya. Well, uh, tell you what, Waffles. <clears throat> Couldn't uh, ask someone to bring my stuff around, could you? Oh, of course. You're not gonna, not gonna see them all? No, I need something to do, you know? Something to do. The, uh, professor's relieved, I'd say. Won't see him here for a long time. I should think if ever. They're gone. January, February. It feels like forever since we sat here together. There's no way. They're gone. Right, Vanya, we got some letter from the factory this morning asking us for our invoices. I can't believe none of these have been sent out. Let's do this. 
you do the first ones, and I'll do the second ones, and so on. Can you see? Mm -hmm. Count Mr. I feel sad now. They're gone, you know. <laughs> I'm ready for the hills. Can the scratching in silence? Crickets singing their songs? All is a uh, warm and cozy. I tell you, I just, just don't want to leave. Guess all that's left to do now is to say goodbye. Goodbye table. Goodbye friends. Why are you always fussing about? Stay, sit down. No, I can't, I, I have an obligation. Which leaves an outstanding balance of 25 rubles, with 75 gold. Let me give you a hat. Uh, thank you, Wobbles. Uh, don't, oh, don't bend those. Oh, I... It's fine, I, I like to keep them rolled up. I'm sorry, I wasn't thinking. Keep some flat. It's fine, Waffles, just, you know, works in progress. I'll leave those to you. <laughs> thank you, Waffles. Thank you. When will we see you again? Well, I imagine it won't be until the summer. It's hardly ever possible in the winter, but... If there's an emergency or you need me, just uh, let me know and I'll come. Right then. Uh, well, Nana, cheerio. You're going without any tea? Oh, no, I don't want any. A drop of vodka then, for the long road ahead. Mm, well, maybe. I knew. You see? <laughs> My old horse, Elka, she's gone lame. Oh no, poor Belka. Yeah, don't know what I'm going to do with her now. Take her down to the smith at Brochester Sevna. Yes, I'll uh, have to see what he says. Can you imagine the heat in Africa right now, Bonnie? Hmm? The uh, heat and after, right this moment. Yes, what about it? Well, it must be unbearable. Yes, can you imagine? Yes. No. Uh, it's your good help, not a... <clears throat> Eat something. Oh, no, thank you. I couldn't possibly. My Vasilia, then? Doctor? Um, right. February, Salt. Linton oil, 20 funds. I just feel so complete. I know. What can we do? We have to live. We have days and days and days ahead of us. Endless evenings. But we'll bear it all with good grace. We'll do our work and 
who support everyone who relies on us. We'll do it now. And we'll continue to do it till we're old. And afterwards, we'll, we'll accept our time of dying. And we'll say, yes, we suffered. Yes, there were times we wept, and times we could hardly keep going. And God will smile on us. And you and I will see, Uncle Vanya, will see that life is radiant and beautiful and dignified. We'll look back on these unhappy moments and we'll feel nothing but compassion. And we'll smile. And we'll take our rest. I believe that, Vanya, I do. Look at the angels. The whole sky will be full of diamonds. And we'll see all the pain and all the suffering engulfed by the mercy that's going to fill up the whole world. And our lives will be as sweet and gentle as a caress. I believe it, Vanya, I do. And I know, Uncle Vanya, that you have yet to see happiness in this life, but just you wait, and then you'll see. You will rest, we'll rest.